happy to be in this amazing Hall of Fame with you tonight. My name is Kathy Armistead, and I'm on the board of directors for the 49ers Academy. Yay! Before we begin tonight, I would like to acknowledge my fellow board members um, that are here with us tonight. So if y'all could please stand. You've already had your, your ovation, but stand anyways. I would also like to introduce you to our new interim executive director of the 49ers Academy, Lori Adachi. It's an honor to serve our community and be part of an organization that shares my personal values of opportunity, access, and social justice. As you'll hear tonight, the 49ers Academy is all about family and community. It's our incredible staff that has created this culture and are making an impact every day. So it's my pleasure to introduce our staff, and if you would please still stand up and give a little wave.
next to each other. That's my teammate. As you saw, the Michael ran next to each other. Yeah. Uh, so as you saw in the video, Brian's talent and his and his and his character inspired me. Inspired me on the football team. Uh, it continues to inspire uh, inspire a lot of people, and we're honored to have him here tonight. So Brian, thank you for being here. As much as, as much as we want to celebrate your achievements on the field, we're here tonight to talk about the power of education and the impact the 49ers Academy has had on people in our community. As many of you know, the 49ers Academy is a nonprofit organization that works tirelessly to support uh, adverse students in East Palo Alto. Our mission is to keep students to help students succeed in school and close the achievement gap with academic programs and need-based services. The approach is very unique. It takes a holistic approach to education, providing individualized wraparound support for students. So, thank you again for being here. Tonight, we have an opportunity uh, for Brian, Kristen, Michelle, and my best friend, right now, I, I give myself too much pressure now, Miriam Magadi. Uh, is actually an alumnus of, um, of the 49ers Academy, uh, and she also was the winner of the BY Christian Scholarship Fund, and also we have Michelle Sharkey, who is, who is a founder, and uh, she brought me into the program many years ago, uh, and I've enjoyed kind of what she's done and what she does still continues to do for the Academy and inspiring young people. So thank you guys for being here. And what's gonna happen, we're, we're gonna share some personal stories. We, we've got some questions. Uh, then I'm gonna open up the space for you folks to, 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 to ask some questions too. So at this time, we would ask our panelists to come up, B.Y., Kristen, Michelle, and Mary. Kristen, you're up first. You ready? You got your water there? I feel pressure right now. No pressure, no pressure. All right. All right, 25 years. Okay, you've been involved with this program for 25 years. Share with the folks what, what motivates you uh, and, and how do you keep it going for 25 years? Ooh, um, I'm going to have to say Exhibit A. <laughs> uh, Miriam, uh, that, that, that's, what, that's what keeps you going, because uh, there are absolutely some students that you see at the Fortnite Academy that you know they're going to make it, regardless of whether or not you help them. They just have that drive and determination to do that. And there are also students that need that extra push and that extra love and that extra, you know, cheerleading to know that they can do it. But when you see students like Miriam, who, who just needs an opportunity, it keeps you going and it propels you to say, what, what can we do to help students like Miriam? Um, and then, I, I, I don't want it to, to seem like it's actually Brian and I who, who did the work because writing a check or fundraising or going to parties or raising money and giving Christmas presents are easy to do. What Michelle and the staff do and board members do for the Fort Niner Academy, um, to, to be able to come alongside and have friendships that last 25 years. Uh, and, and Michelle will be the person who, when she asks us to do things, we say absolutely want to do it because we know that Michelle is the one and the teachers are the one and the administrative staff are the ones who really do the footwork and are the hands and feet. So. Yeah, and it's all about relationship, right? You know, kind of building those relationships. And, you know, I always go back to my childhood. You know, I had some challenges, some learning challenges. And it was always the teachers that were at my school that took the time to kind of figure out, you know, how could they help me and, and kind of what I was going through. So that relationship, I, I think that is huge. Um, B.Y., um, you, you had some, talk about challenges. You had some challenges early in your career with injuries. We all go through it. You came back. 
I mean, you've won, you know, the list of awards, you know, Lynn Ashmont, and of course the Hall of Fame. Um, but talk about courage and, you know, how, how you came from that and how you carried that on uh, to inspire young people at, at the Academy. Just the challenges. Yeah, very good question. Um, first, uh, what an opportunity to have played with a, such an iconic franchise and a story, um, just an amazing brand. And uh, without the support of the organization and playing with incredible instructors and coaches, amazing teammates, I wouldn't be able to achieve the things that I've done on the field. And so I want to give kudos to them first and foremost. And I was inspired, um, not just for myself, but I was inspired by my teammates. And at the Hall of Fame, one of the things I said is that I never wanted to let my teammates down. And I really mean that to the core of my heart, is that every time I laced it up, every time I put the pads on, it was important for me to make sure I held up my end of the bargain. And so uh, I was inspired by that. Um, and then to earn some of the accolades, nobody does it alone. But when I look at all the things that I've been able to accomplish with the village and the team, um, we are a product of that. Um, what pales in comparison is if I hadn't used the platform and the celebrity status that I've gained over the years to be able to serve and better others and, and be a helping hand in some capacity, um, I would have done myself, my family, and my community a disservice. And so it's always been important to me. Uh, it's always been important to me to be able to, um, you know, achieve and, and bring people along with you. And to whom much is given, much is required. And so having the opportunity to, to be a partner in what Michelle and the rest of the students who uh, really took advantage of some of the things that we're doing, it was an honor and a blessing. And then most importantly, when I look at the people that have come alongside of us, that have partnered with us along the way, um, in terms of the donors, the people that have support us, have supported us outside of the academy, um, we're so richly blessed by all of you that have done that. How you have served, whether you're a board member, whether you give in some capacity, or you volunteer your time, uh, time talent treasure, uh, we're so grateful for all of you, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, and, and it takes a village, right? That's what it's about, right? It takes a village and it takes everyone to, you know, go out there and, you know, you find the college, you find your it, uh, and, you, and, and you, you attack it. And this is a program that, you know, we'll talk about it later, but this is a program that's grown and continues to grow, and they're doing big things. Mario, down at the end there. Um, you are now the director of, what was it? The, the Director of Family Support in Menlo Park. First, talk about that role, and then after, uh, talk about how your experience or your time at the 49ers Academy has kind of uh, translated into your new role. So talk about your role first. So I'm the Director of Family Support Services at Menlo School. Um, this is year two for me. So even though I've been gone from you know being at MA and being you know in Ravenswood with the Boy Niners Academy, I never really left. I'm still in touch with kids, still in touch with Armando and Jenny and families. Um, I feel like this is once year of Boy Niners Academy, forever Boy Niners Academy, and I think that's a testament to everyone that's here in the room. Um, it's super super unique to have a nonprofit and organization have the kind of impact that the 49ers Academy had in my life, um, especially in the way that I've decided to live my life and moving forward and the way that I continue to receive support from Michelle, from Steve, from Kendra, everyone that's in this room. I think there's, we keep calling it the secret sauce, but this is, it's so much more than that, is a way of finding adults that really, really care about the mission, care about the work, care about humanity, because we infuse it in, into the work that we do with parents, with students. Um, so many amazing stories to tell about our students who, we have parents here in the room whose kids went through the academy. I've had three of Shanice's kids, Shanice is somewhere back there, who are doing incredible advocacy work. 
Um, so I think that I've benefited from that tremendously, but I also see it like so much further beyond um, into the lives of students in our community. So I'm super grateful and super proud to be an alum of the Fighting Enters Academy. Love it. I love the gratitude. I love the gratitude. All right, Michelle, we're Now we're just talking about relationships. Um, talk to us about the culture uh, for the other academy, the things, uh, you know, the, you know, meet with the kids, meet with the parents, you know, knowing the household that you're coming from, knowing the situation, how is that kind of structured as far as mentorship uh, and just relationship building within the culture of the 49ers Academy? I think we, our tagline forever was programs don't change kids, relationships do, because it's really not rocket science, it's finding a team of people that you surround yourself with that really show up for kids and are authentically there for them to get to know them as individuals, not as a fifth grade student, but Miriam, what did you need and how can we help you? And that wasn't like, it's not just me, it's Gina, it's Steve, it's Kendra, it's all the team that are here today, I can't see you all, but it's, it's that, it's to building the family. I mean, that's how like, all I can explain it. Krista, I don't even remember this, but you introduced me once, and it really sunk home with me. You said, oh, this is my friend Michelle. She's a mother of two, but a mama of hundreds. And that, and that really, it, it spoke to the work that we did. So, um, yeah, it's, it's taking the time to be present and know each child on an authentically on an individual basis, and then just meet them where they are and make it work. That's huge. Yeah, again. Chris, if I'm not mistaken, did you homeschool? Yes. <laughs> I was like, it was fun. Yeah, yeah it was great. I was you impressed. Yeah. Yeah. You were impressed. You were impressed. You were impressed. You were impressed. You were Now, I'll talk about, I know uh, you and BY, uh, you guys actually adopted uh, a class, right? Uh, the Dream Team. And you provided financial assistance and you supported them through uh, college. So, you know, and you were part of that, that classroom, right, Mary? Nice. So, you know, just talk about what inspires you and, you know, what is it that you see? I mean, when you see a young person and you understand that education is the key, what is the inspiration um, for you to go in there, like, you know, homeschooling your own children? What's the inspiration? Is it just, you know, you feel the need or is it just that passion? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I, I, well, for my own kids, it's different because I'm legally responsible. For but for other kids, um, you know, pre-mommy years, I worked at a, at, a, at a private foundation in San Francisco, and my area was supporting uh, children, youth, and families. And we did a lot of programs in school, did a lot of boys and girls clubs. So I, I was able to see um, a lot of organizations in Northern California and see how they worked. Uh, and so when Brian and I decided that we wanted to do a foundation, we had a choice of, do we want to do a lot of, of little things, you know, here and there, or do we want to do one big thing and do it well, and when that time is over, you know, fold the foundation and, and call it a day, and hopefully we've done some good. And so that's what we decided to do by adopting uh, the, uh, the class at, at the Fort Niner Academy, because Michelle said that there was a need. Um, and, and I think that's the difference for us because the kids were graduating from eighth grade and they were losing them in, in high school. And so how can we still maintain those relationships, uh, see how they're doing, check in on them, know that we still love them when they go off to high school. One way that, that we thought of was that we were gonna adopt a class. And so for us, it, it wasn't, like I said earlier, it wasn't that um, we needed to raise money. We, we had the platform. And it wasn't that we didn't um, have the, um, the talent. We, we had the talent with the teachers and with Michelle and, and donors and the board. What, what it required of Brian and I was our time. And, and it's the time to invest in young people. It's the time to tell young people that, that they're great, that we see them, that, that they have dreams, that, that we support and things like that. And so for us, it's like, what, what's going to cost us? What's going what's to be the sacrifice? And for us, it's the time. Um, and that's what we wanted to do. 
And so um, we asked Michelle, what was the need? And it's, it, it's really simple. It's, it's so simple. What's the need? Okay, how can we meet it? Let's go do it. And then I have to add, because when you guys were with us, it was just middle school. And then we invested in this one, and she came straight out of college, and her first job was with us, and she built our high school program. So it really went full circle. I tell you, when Michelle approached me, all I had was time. I had no money. So, so I spent a lot of time at the academy just, just doing things, because that's all I had. But a lot of times, that's what it is, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's time. It's time, and, it, and, it's, and it's a lot of face time. So I appreciate you, Michelle. She probably thought she was, oh, I got an ex 49er. And I was like, no, but I've got a lot of time. I've got a lot of time, man. Uh, you know what? Uh, long time support. Uh, and we talk about all these things. You're seeing, you're seeing these young people, you're inspiring these young people. They're going off, they're going off to college, they're going into corporate America. Uh, and tell me, what, what did you learn from that experience? Um, you know, as far as, you know, seeing these young people go, even the ones that didn't go. What have you learned, the good, the bad, with the experience with the, with the academy? Um, what I've learned is that um, people, young people want to know that you care. And when I realized how important for, it was for us to, to show that we care, not even knowing us, we're complete strangers, like, who are these people? But, but to show some interest in them and their future, um, that was really um, the thing for me, and it, it inspired me, and I think that matters to the young people. But when I, when I think about, too, like, um, you know, how, how can we be more, not just, you know, give our time, but how can we be more impactful? And, and so this program that we did, um, kudos to Michelle again, because it was in place, and it was like, how can we figure out to stay and track all the kids, and so we would have these opportunities to 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 meet them a couple times a year and uh, be around them. And I wish we could have done it more, to be honest. And and, um, and but we we would be around them, and so it was just amazing to see how they would begin to flourish. And some kids took advantage of the opportunities. Miriam, um, we have others in the audience, um, and then there were some kids that that just worked and and we lost track of, and so, but, but, you, but you realize that um, put something out there, an opportunity, and hopefully somebody will take advantage of what's out there. Yeah, plant the seed, right? You just plant the seed, plant the seed and watch it grow. Miriam, tell me, your, what's your biggest impact? I mean, what, what was the biggest impact being, you know, in this classroom, the dream team, uh, you know, knowing that, you know, your expectations, um, what was the biggest impact leaving 49ers Academy? It's twofold. I feel like I can talk about the impact that it had on my life. You know, like it's a multi-generational impact. I've gone through college, my child will go to college, we know how to do this, and forever grateful, my family forever grateful. Um, through the academy, I learned how to do what was done for me, and I've continued to push that forward. And I've seen, you know, Armando, Jenny, Rosalie, Maria, everyone that's here from the academy, Antonia, Michelle, continue to do that kind of work. Um, and I think this is something that people don't realize unless you are really familiar with the academy. Like, we're a web, and we're deep in East Palo Alto, and East Menlo Park, and Redwood City, we have parents on the board at Sequoia Union High School District. We have parents in nonprofits, and we're connected, and we're here to support each other. And it's a really, really strong network. So I'm really proud to be a part of that and continue to see our kids bring us even higher and higher moving forward. Yeah, and with programs like this, it becomes generational, right? I mean, your kids and you know other kids and their kids, it just becomes the way things happen. Right, and you grow up, and you're like, I'm going to the academy, and this is my next step. If it's high school, if it's college, whatever it is, it becomes generational, and you kind of plant that seed, and you create that. So, thank you, 49ers Academy, for that. Uh, Michelle, you ready for this one? This is a big question now. As the founder of the 49ers Academy, what is your proudest achievement? Proudest. I mean, I can't answer that. I can say that every student success story is a win for me, 
And I mean, obviously, Exhibit A. Um, I mean, Miriam is my family. She's not family anymore. We're like friends and colleagues. We travel together. We're, we're, it's a life partnership. I mean, La Celine, Jose, Yudi, there's other students, our alumni here today, and it's all of that. So um, I think it's, I'm, yeah, I'm proud of the legacy that we've, we've left behind, and, and like Marion said, playing it forward and watching students <coughs> continue the work, but also embodying what we stand for and our values and taking that out is so important to me. So, and I, I mean, children, I, sorry guys. <laughs> I, um, oh, those two. Oh, those two. <laughs> but it's, I'm so proud of them because I, I see them growing to these beautiful humans that give back and care and have empathy and are kind and generous. And that's, that's my, the, my greatest, proudest moment of those two. Thank you. Thank you. So, I got, I got a question. Seeing your mother, I'm going to put you on the spot. Seeing your mother having, what, a hundred and whatever kids, and, and seeing her passion, you know, and I know you guys have always been a part of it, but what were your thoughts? Say, so you got to talk about that. I mean, I think there is, like, not a narrative or a stereotype against just mothers who work in general, or mothers who aren't home all day. And I think for us, obviously, we had a mom who was going to work just as much as a dad was. And seeing that example and also having her be so present in our lives and not miss a single step, a single minute, hours of being supportive the entire time, I think it just set such an amazing example, not just us, for us as young women, but just for us as people. And witnessing her work all the way through has just inspired us to live our lives the way she did and hopefully make as much of a mark as she did, or even, you know, a little bit, but after that. Wow! <laughs> 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 but, yeah, exactly. The example she says for us is, like, compared to how many students she's impacted, like, that impact on everyone is yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I remember going there for the first time and thinking, you know, it was just a, a school. It was something different. I went there for a cleanup day, and the entire Fortnite Academy was there cleaning up that entire um, uh, playground area in the school. They were painting, they were fixing things because they had so much pride in it, because so much pride was put into it. So, fantastic job, Michelle, and, and thank you for doing that for us. But I, it's not about me. I mean, it is... I have to. We're well, gonna acknowledge you a little. No, I mean, I know I'm the face for this, but it's a, it was such a family and team. And Steve Williams, I'm so sorry to call you out, but without that man on my other side, this place wouldn't have been what it was. So I need to call up those two as well. Still, good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. So uh, in this last question, we're just gonna go down the line. Start with you, uh, By. Um, what is your favorite memory of your time working at the Academy? And I'll start. I'll start when you think, okay? So my favorite time was once uh, I was invited. I was invited to uh, the Academy and the Harlem Globetrotters were in town. And I had seen the Harlem Globetrotters since I was a kid. Uh, and we spent the day with Harlem Globetrotters uh, in the gym. Uh, there was a lot of activities going around. And again, all the kids were there. They were running around and, and having a good time. And I was thinking, this is what I was looking for when I was a kid. You know, school as a, as a positive place, uh, an inspiring place. Uh, and that was my favorite. I remember leaving there thinking, man, I wish they had that around, you know, when I was in, uh, in, when I was in elementary school. Because I had so many issues in elementary school. So that was my favorite memory. Do what? Um, that's a good one. Um, it, the times that when we took our kids there, that was so... Um, that I'll take your answer. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I have a picture. Yes. We're reviving today? Yeah, right. Okay. Um, for one day at a time. Um, but, but when we took our kids there, it was, it was a really just um, a blessing to see how much the, the students embraced our kids and they became almost part of, they became a bigger part of our family. 
I mean, them embracing our kids, and, and we are getting to know them, our, the students as well. And so each time we uh, went there, um, it was just, you know, just play time for the kids. They had big brothers and sisters uh, there at the school. So um, there were multiple times they went, so each time was very special and, and a big memory for me. Oh, he took mine. <laughs> um, but does it have to be at the academy? Does it have to be like on the property? Let's see. What are the perimeters? It doesn't have to be on the property, uh, but it could be anything. Okay. To open okay. It up All right. All right. So I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna go with the Lincoln Center. Okay. Um, so we we when the kids. The dream team moved on to uh, to high school. Uh, one of my favorite moments was we once that once a year they had to come back and, and we had pizza at I think it was Menlo High School. We had pizza somewhere. It wasn't wasn't at the academy. And it's seeing the kids come back and and seeing how mature they are because when we met you guys, you were actually in sixth grade um, and we adopted you in eighth grade. Um, but to see them grow and mature, and then when they graduated from high school, and, and another thing that we also did was we, our offer wasn't just if, if they wanted to go to a four-year university, because everybody has different gifts and abilities, and, and university or a four-year university isn't for everybody. Some kids just wanted to learn a trade and start working, and that's great. And some kids just wanted to go to a, a two-year university, and that's great. And some kids wanted to go to four-year. We wanted you guys to do whatever you wanted to do. Um, we just wanted to come alongside and support you. But um, I remember when Jonathan um, got into UC Santa Barbara and having a conversation with him um, as a high school senior and then having a conversation with him his sophomore year and his junior year and seeing the maturity and it, it's there's a pride that happens. I I did not birth that kid. Um, I had I I had very little to do with his life, but to see them grow and to see each one of them grow and know that you know just saying yes to to just being a part of somebody's life or saying yes to Michelle blessed me like that. So that's my favorite memory is watching like them grow. I like Can you skip me? I literally can't do I have so just many. One, though. We just, we got one. I mean, I think one of the coolest things I thought happened to us was when we had the opportunity to host the Dalai Lama at the 49ers Academy. And he sent a team ahead of time to pick a location in the Bay Area. And they chose the Academy because we had the best vibe. So when the Dalai Lama picked us, I think that was really, really, that's one of my favorite moments. And then, you know, it was a good vibe. And I'll pick Marion. <laughs> but for me, yeah, my favorite memories are, are, are memories we're making now because I feel like we're colleagues and we, we're doing such cool things together. So I think there's, yeah. So I, I think my favorite memories are when the kids, the students come back and you, you see them and you see the people they become and it's just that sense of pride. And I agree with you. Like, they, I didn't come from me, but I feel that I am part of that. And it's, it's really important. Do you remember this is a question I told you that was really hard? <laughs> Wait a minute, no, that, that was not the question. I didn't I go back to that one if you The want. reason why this yeah, yeah, is hard another. is because so. I have so many memories of kids, of students. So I'm going to pick some general ones um, because I feel like it's the culture that we have at the academy that we created from the very beginning that's so unique. Um, so events like Multicultural Day where our kids are singing and performing and doing all those things, face painting with Michelle, doing the different things with the teachers, um, events that bring us together, allow us to show our identities and share them amongst each other in the group. I think those are the strongest ones. I have a really hard time pinpointing a kid. I, it's just, there's so many, and there will continue to be, but I get really excited about seeing them in eighth grade, seeing who they're becoming, their potential, and just thinking about, oh my gosh, where is this kid gonna go, and what are they gonna do? And that's just what I loved about being there. Awesome, well, gee, can I, I got one more. You got another memory? <laughs> it just popped up. <laughs> 
Just <laughs> is it Great America by any chance? Is it Great America by any chance? Not, not Great America. Um, every, every time we had a chance to meet the students' parents, that was really, um, it was impactful uh, for me. Um, just to um, see how prideful and, 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 and proud, proud they were of their students and the kids. Um, and getting to meet them and talk to them and under, help them understand the place that we were coming from and the heart that we had along with Michelle and the staff and then having the chance to um, I'm drawing a blank right here you, oh, you talk yeah, about the yeah that's the worst thing um, having the chance to meet you for that life having the chance to, to, to meet heart. yeah <laughs> To meet your, your family and then uh, get invited over to her family's house and drink a little cava. You were right. <laughs> I have a picture if you want. Yeah. So, and you know, to me, that's what it was all about. And just to help maybe ease people's um, maybe angst and, and, and help them understand the angle um, and our passion and where we were coming from and, and get to know them, let them know that we care, we're looking out for the best interests of your love and your student, your child. And so um, I, I so appreciate uh, those moments each time we were able to meet them. And that's about cult cultivating relationships, right? That's right. That is huge. So, all right. Um, thank you guys for sharing those stories. And, and I think it's, it's, it's obvious to everyone that uh, this program has impacted a lot of a lot of youth in East Palo Alto. Um, but what I want to do um, is open up the space um, and allow folks in the audience who might have questions for anyone on the panel, uh, give an opportunity now to ask some of those burning questions. I know someone's got some questions up there uh, about the academy or you know about what's going on with me right now. Anything you want to, anything you want to ask, go ahead and ask. So uh, I think we got a mic. Do we have a mic somewhere? Or do I got to walk everywhere? That's steps. All right, there we go. So in the back, we got it always in the back, brother. <laughs> Brian Young, you know, Super Bowl champion, four-time Pro Bowler, Hall of Famer. Um, but before all of that, you went to Notre Dame, and you were still okay, stats. Yeah. Irish. <laughs> yeah, you were part of the Fighting Irish thing. Um, I just think that being a student athlete is um, very big in its own. You know, student coming before athlete, and um, when I'm in college, sometimes I forget that some of the greatest players that play in the NFL went to college as well. Um, John Montana, Notre Dame, Steve Young, BYU, Jeff Garcia, San Jose State, and um, you went to Notre Dame, so I was wondering if you could talk about your experience as a student athlete, because, um, you know, football isn't forever, but you know, your time as, at Notre Dame, how was that being a student athlete before becoming a Hall of Fame? Uh, very good question. Man, you, somebody need to get his, a, a job in, with the uh, you know, story in the 49ers. Um, what about my sex? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, my, my time at, um, at Notre Dame was very um, enriching, um, it changed me, um, I was challenged, I really had to, I couldn't remember picking up a book in high school, not that I was a dumb jock, but just it was, high school was a lot easier uh, for me in terms of just you know, looking over a chapter taking the quiz and then getting the A on the exam. And so learning um, to how, how to manage my time and be more efficient uh, when I became a, a student athlete in college, it was, a, it was a bit difficult at times. And so I had to learn to get acclimated um, because when you're competing on that level, um, you really have to be very mindful and learn how to manage your time appropriately. And so uh, those are one of the things I had to learn. But the relationships that I built um, in those four years that I was there was amazing. Um, the time as, a, as an athlete was amazing. Um, the relationships that um, I forged over the years, um, I still have to this day. And so, but um, when you talk about an opportunity uh, to be a student athlete, a lot of times the athletic side doesn't work out for people. In, and especially in this day and age, we think high school, college, 
and we're going to the pros. That's not always the case. And so what um, it was important for me as a first generation uh, college student was to get my degree. Um, my athleticism afforded me a free education, so here I am, I had opportunities and I took full advantage of the one that I had in Notre Dame. And so it was important for me to make my family proud, but also knowing that I was, I was one injury away from my athletic career being over. So I had to make sure I always had a fallback plan. And um, that's why I would tell kids today, you know, nobody's athletic career is promised after college. So make sure that you take full advantage of all the academic uh, opportunities you have in front of you. Um, make connections, get outside of your little bubble, um, and build relationships with people that don't play sports. And uh, some of the coolest relationships I have today are people that I met in college that don't play sports. My college roommate, incredible guy, didn't play sports. Um, and so other people are, that are like that, get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your little athletic bubble and, and get to know other people because you never know that relationship you build, how far it will go, uh, not just for you know personal gain, but just to enrich your life and to, to understand that there are different things out there and, and, and cultures and relationships. And so that was important for me, and I wanted to make sure that um, I did that. I had to be intentional about um, doing those type of things to build those relationships. Yeah, that's a great answer. And I, and I just want to piggyback it back that by saying, you know, when I got to college, football was easy. Studying was the hard part. So I kind of put myself around people doing things uh, that I wanted to do. And that was the guys that were studying. Because football was easy. And just hit and tackle. That's all I did. Getting into books was tough. I had to learn how to study. So putting yourself around, get that circle. People doing things that, that, that you want to get done. Uh, and hang out with those people. Like BY said, get out that box. You know, go hang out with the students, go to the library, you'd be amazed at things that you can learn, so. <laughs> so I think we averaged 80 kids a year. Oh, I'm sorry, 40 kids a year. 60, yeah, we from 40 to 60 graduating per year, so times 25. And then all the families and alumni and kids as an intern for the Ravenswood City School District and from then I grew into kind of the grant writer and just catch-all person for community development but we got a grant I think it was it wasn't healthy start it was some big federal grant where we started a program we got a couple hundred thousand dollars and then we did all this great work and when the program and or the money ended, the program just went away. And I was like, this is so wrong, because these kids, and at that point, I, I grew up in Palo Alto, so I always really had a heart for um, East Palo Alto. And my parents grew up, you know, we were always working with, you know, picketing with the farm workers and doing all sorts of activism work with my parents. So that was just ingrained in who I was, but really what it came down to was these, we had this great model of um, wrapping services around for kids. Like, so someone like a Miriam who needs counseling or needs all this stuff, it wasn't available at school. And if you were going to access it for San Mateo County, you'd have to get on a bus and go somewhere else. So the thought was we would just create a space where we brought the services to the kids. And then I was also didn't want it to be tied to just one stream of funding with state funding because that went away and it went away. So we decided to build with the partnership with the school district to build a nonprofit to be a public private partnership so it we could be in and you know really put up a sustainable fundraising mechanism but also make the the whole program sustainable. And so that was kind of the thought and it just grew from there. And and I have to say, my first person I met when we brought this was Steve Williams and we were both like 28 and didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> so I just, I mean, all we knew was that how we grew up in, in the tr struggles I had in middle school. And I'm like, I can do that. I can make these kids feel important, feel heard, and we can figure out what they need. And that's just how we started. We really did. It was that simple. Like, it's grown so. Here we are.
Um, this is it. This is what is needed. It's needed uh, a room full of people who will show up on a Thursday night um, and be here, listen uh, to the students, uh, to the, the people who have dedicated their uh, careers and their, their lives to, to this organization. So I'd say this is what is needed. Uh, the, the academy has withstood um, a global pandemic, has uh, withstood uh, changes of schools, has withstood changes in leadership, and it's still here. And it won't be here unless the community continues to rally around it. So when you ask what is needed, this room is what is needed. Um, and it uh, goes beyond this room, it goes to your networks. It goes to everyone that you know, and you, when you leave here, and you can go and say, hey, I was at this amazing event. I got to hear about this institution that's in our backyard, in our community, and serving our community for the last 26 years. That's what's needed. Justin Pettiman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now I'll be in uh, like this intersection of uh, sports and philanthropy for the last nearly 20 years. Um, and uh, I've worked on both coasts, um, on the East Coast, and now um, out here. And you don't see this. I'm, I'm telling you, I've worked with athletes my entire career. You do not see this from Dennis to Bryant to Kristen. We strive, um, and I've strived my entire career to find people like the people who are up here. Um, and we work with our players. Um, to get them to fall in love with this, the communities that they're playing in and that they're serving in and give back and then press the fast forward button to almost 20 years later, they're still here. They flew out across the country to be here tonight. Um, they made a commitment. <laughs> they made a commitment um, to, to students and to a community, and they're still here. So my question to all of you um, is why? What is your why? Um, because Michelle, that was a great question, whoever asked it about um, uh, why you started. But you don't see, like, Michelle's a unicorn. People don't just start nonprofits because they get upset that they, a program that they were working on lost funding. That's a unicorn. Miriam is a unicorn. Like she's now giving back. She started a high school program after seeing that there was a need. So to each one of you, what is your why? And I think we can follow up with that and you talk about what's needed. And, and there's an opportunity to help this, this program continue to grow. Um, did everybody get a postcard? Hold up your postcards. You got a postcard? I wonder about a postcard. There we go. There we go. So on that postcard, postcard, you got a uh, QR code, uh, and you know this is you know this is what you need. I mean, this is what it's about. I mean, every every program that's a nonprofit, you need funding, and this gives you an opportunity to help build this program. So I challenge everyone in here: take that that card home with you, take it to 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 like Justin said, to your network, talk about this, and, and it's clear to see tonight that this program is. It is important. It's important in East Palo Alto. It's important all over. It's important in San Francisco and the Bay. It's important everywhere. Underserved uh, communities need programs like this. And like I said, when I was every time I went to this program, I thought of when I was when I was a child. There was nothing like that around in LA that I could go to and feel comfortable and feel important. So that's the need right there. And it's on that and it's on that uh, postcard. So I encourage everybody to uh, help build this, continue to build this. So. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, Michelle, if you're looking at me, did I forget something? We have another? You did. We, we need to answer Justin's question. Okay, oh, I thought I just answered it. <laughs> you had a long question, Michelle. You, you got part one right, but part two. Okay. Oh, you want me to start? Yeah. The why, um, I actually think about that a lot because when I retired from the academy, I spent a lot of time soul searching and I was like, what am I going to do? So what I really realized, and I talked to Gina about this a lot, is that 
my purpose or what what drives me is East Palm Mountain our community, and I'm not done there. So I don't, I can't, I don't know the why. I just think for me, and that's why we're all. I think when I met these guys, like we, it was just, that was normal. Like 4,900 players should, we should all meet all the time and make plans, and this is what we did. Like it was. I was just lucky that I found my people right away and we all have the same values. It's just about the kids. Like it is whatever it takes for the kids and to find, you know, like minded people and surround yourself with it, but the why is just to help. I'd love to add. Um, I think for me the why is the kids. Like Oz believing in the kids, supporting them, giving them a chance to have somewhat of a more even playing field because the world is a tough place depending on what school you go to. Um, our kids are amazing, they're resilient, they're strong, they're changing the world and we need to step up and be there for them in ways that society isn't. So that's my why. Outside this room, it's a dumpster fire. And um, us adults have let down kids. We've let them down. And it feels, feels very overwhelming when, when you see that there are, um, that there's a building on fire and there's a hundred kids in the building. And you can't grab all hundred of them. You can only grab one or two. And um, my why is the academy was is the one kid I can grab and save him from the fire. Uh, and we all have one or two kids we can grab. Like the the burden is not meant for one person to carry alone. That's unrealistic. But what we can do is is, is what's put in front of us to do. Um, and so for me, this is something that is tangible. It's something that um, I already had the relationship, I already have the relationship. Um, and in a day and age where everything is, is microwave fast, commitments are short, um, tempers are long, what can we do where we just do life together and have relationships? Um, and, and that's what keeps us coming back. It's, it's, I wish it was. A, a complex um, equation, but it's not. It's like the building's on fire, and there's kids in the building, and we need to rescue them. And and, it's, and as adults in the room, it's our responsibility to do it. Um, I'll, I'll keep it short. I think um, along with what Kristen said, um, yeah, just. I think because of the, the name and the association, that that's where the need was, and it, it, it almost was like uh, it was a cheat code <laughs> because of the association with the name. But that's where the need was, and for for me, for us, it, uh, uh, for for me, my why, um, my why is is to help people, young people, um, understand that they are. Value. They do matter, and they are important, no matter what circumstance you come from. And and so that has been my why, because I've seen unfavorable circumstances where I grew up. I didn't grow up in it, but I've been around it, and I understand it. And then to have the opportunity to have achieved much. And then in a position to give and be a part of such an incredible opportunity to help better somebody else's lives, that has been my why. All right. Uh, well, should, I, uh, should I close out again, or should I? So let's talk about the, let's talk about the postcards again. Yeah. Here we are. Everyone who has the postcards, there you go. Your opportunity, and you've seen tonight. This is this is this is something that's huge. This is special, um, and it's important that uh, we continue to support organizations like this because 
I mean, it's, it's powerful. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's, it, it's powerful uh, and it's super important. So, Michelle, you want to come up and say some stuff? Are we good? It's all me. All right, it's all me. Don't let it be me. All right. <laughs> all right, so that's, that's going to conclude our program.